In this video, we're going to be talking about types of forces and the basics of how to draw a force diagram. In front of you, we have six different forces that we're going to be focusing on. There are definitely more than six forces pushing or pulling out there in the universe, but these are the six that are the most common or the most applicable to a lot of the situations that you're going to be analyzing. So first of all, I want you to take a few moments to read over the information and take a look at the diagrams before we start getting into the details. Okay, the first one we're going to take a look at is the force of gravity right below it in blue it says it's a pull from the earth so for most of the definitions that i'm providing there are going to be very quick concise definitions that don't typically have a lot of details but sort of get straight to the point the force of gravity isn't solely just a pull from the earth but from the situations you're going to be looking at early on you can just consider it a pull straight down from the earth so if we drew that in our picture, we're going to draw an arrow straight down towards the center of our Earth and put FG to label the type of force. So that's kind of like your free force that you can draw in every one of your diagrams right away. For our second force, that is called the normal force. That one is not commonly recognized. It is a perpendicular push from a surface. It's often known as a support force. The word normal in this context actually means perpendicular. So you want to make sure that your arrow creates a 90 degree angle with your surface. So if I were to draw a normal force in this picture, I want to make sure it goes up on an angle 90 degrees from the surface. In a lot of situations, for example, the first one, it might just go straight up perpendicular from the surface. But if the surface is angled or turned any which way, you just want to make sure that your force is angled so that it's perpendicular to the surface. Okay, that is unlike FG, where FG is always consistently perfectly straight down in your diagrams. Okay, in our third picture, we have two different pictures and we're talking about the force of tension. It's the pull from any type of string, rope, chain, wire, any type of material that's sort of rope-like can be considered the force of tension. It is always a pull. So it is always moving away from the object. If you take a look at our first picture, we have a box being suspended from a ceiling and we have two ropes attached to it. So we're gonna make sure we put two forces of tension. Okay, so you want to make sure that you don't just draw one arrow and one FT because it's actually two different objects. Therefore, they both have their own different FTs. In our second picture over here, we have a person pulling a sled. Again, it's a rope like object. It's being pulled. The arrow goes straight away from the object. There's your FT, the pull from the rope. For the fourth one, it is an, an applied force. It's a push or pull from someone or something. That is a very vague definition. The way I kind of look at it is if there's an object or a person in your picture that is pushing or pulling on it that isn't a rope type material, then it kind of falls into this vague category of applied force. So over here, I have a person who's pushing a stroller. So the person who's pushing the stroller in this picture their arm seems to be angled just like that. So I'm gonna put an FA and an applied force, the angle in which they're pushing the stroller. In our second picture, we have someone pulling a doorknob. They're pulling away at this angle. So I'm gonna put an applied force back away at that angle. Okay, so an applied force is kind of like your general dumping ground if something doesn't fall in the FT category, but there is someone or something in your picture that is interacting with the object. Your fourth one is an applied, excuse me, your fifth one is your force of friction. So we have two different kinds of friction. We have kinetic and static. Kinetic is definitely the one that's most widely recognized because it's the one that opposes a slide. It's the one where you rub your hands together. That's a car screeching to a stop sort of thing. So the reason why friction happens is because there's irregularities, there's little bumps in 
all surfaces. And as something glide ac glides across those irregularities, those bumps push back against the object that's sliding. So anytime something is sliding, it will for sure experience a force of friction in the exact opposite direction of the way that it's moving. So according to my little picture here, if someone is moving down the slide on that angle, the force of friction is exactly in the opposite direction. Just like that. Okay, now for static friction. Static friction is opposing something trying to slide. So say for example, this person sat on the slide and they aren't sliding, then you would call that FFS to show that something is trying to slide. Okay, so let's try another example. If you take a look at this picture right here, say for example, the person is pulling this, this woman in the sled and the surface is a little bit too rough or there's too much weight and they're pulling and it's not sliding, then you would call this opposing force, force of static friction because it's something trying to slide and the surface itself is pushing back against that pull and stopping it from moving. Our very last one is air resistance. So air resistance would be a push from air molecules when an object is in motion. So technically anything that's moving around the world, around the earth, is experiencing air resistance. Even you walking down a hallway, there is air resistance because you are colliding with the air molecules. Anytime you collide with something, it's gonna push back against you. And then the faster you move, the greater air resistance you're gonna get. So in most of our pictures, we're actually not gonna include air resistance. I would say in a very, very high majority of your scenarios, you're not gonna include air resistance. So technically, in a lot of these pictures, say for example, this one over here, this one over here, and this one over here, anytime something is moving, technically there is air resistance, but most of the time it's negligible. You don't really have to pay much attention to it. It would be typically somewhere, a scenario where something is falling because of the force of gravity pulling down on it, and then the air resistance opposes it, that's gonna have a very significant effect on the way that it accelerates and the way that it moves. Okay, so air resistance is definitely there, but like I said, it is neglected in most cases. So you typically only wanna include it if there is some really large significance to it, like something falling through the air, a parachute being pulled, uh, something of that nature. Okay, so that pretty much sums up our six different forces and then how to draw them in a diagram this is not a detailed description of how to draw a force diagram in general. That's gonna be provided in another video where you would include all of these different forces, but this is just more of an introduction of what the forces look like and when to draw them. So thank you for watching and listening.